Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show. It is the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, virtual stitch-ins, occasionally a book club or two, uh, tutorial videos as well. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends at Inmart and QT Fabrics. You can learn more about them in the links in the show notes. So... We are back with our lovely Radiance fabric from QT. Absolutely. And I'm excited to see what they have just unveiled for upcoming lines at market. I know. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Of course, we've already seen it by the time we're at this. Uh, yes, but they don't know that yet. Oh, okay. Yes, there'll be it some. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love the digital printing because it gives real depth and richness that you don't always get with screen printing. Oh, I agree. Yeah. An edge on things. Yeah, right. so you can check out the latest from QT. Right. And then we have another of our thread bundles from Inmart. So we have the Nifty Christmas Bundle in line with one of our topics. Spoiler alert. Oh. And this has all the fun colors that you would want to go with the Nifty Christmas pattern or just fun Christmas, Christmas sewing. Patterns. They have a lovely metallic silver. I know. Which, which is, is shiny getting... and metallic without being weird and gross and crinkly when it goes through your machine. I know. I really is, like that silver. That's the beauty of the poly. Right. Uh, and then another one of our uh, quilting bundles, which is our basics color. So this has kind of our show colors. Teal, orange, a little bit of brown, purple, a little cheddar, and then a, a nice cheddar. steel gray because, again, that's like my default. <laughs> As one might tell from my sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the, all the plaids on today. All the plaids. I love, I've been looking for a red plaid shirt, and I found one so last what, night. What so are we I was talking about excited. today? So we're going to talk about holiday sewing. <gasps> Spoiler alert. Ideas. And some tips <laughs> for when you make quilts and you want to use the whole line of fabric. All of it. And we're joined by this quilt that was made from a product sheet. Uh, project sheet, not product. Project sheet. Um, it's called, called Scraptacular Stuff. Sawtooth Stars. You did this to me last time with the alliteration. Um, this has been out there for months. <laughs> I know. But the project sheet for this quick quilt is available at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. So, at the time this episode drops, Lynn. We are in Thanksgiving. We're getting ready for some shenanigans. That's shenanigans. A very uh, stitch giving. Right. Yeah. I'm excited because, um, and I know this <laughs> this hasn't happened yet in our lives right now, but so we're planning to get together over Thanksgiving because of families coming in and all yep. this kind of stuff. So um, uh, I'm in charge of making a couple of pies and I think some casseroles. And then you're doing the turkey and I we're got, meeting at Pam's house. and we're, I got Oreo cheesecake. I got turkey. I got... The green bean casserole, the mashed potatoes. My son is very good at mashing potatoes. We learned this a couple weeks ago. Right. So I'm ready to deploy him. Right. <laughs> I was going to make some dressing and some casseroles and some pies. Cool. So. And my mom will make the yam. There you go. Because I don't. The um, one yam? Only one person eats yam? Well, when it's just them, yeah. If you want to have some, we'll get, your, we'll get more than one yam. <laughs> Okay. We don't. This is my family doesn't eat it. So my kids ate it when they were like tiny babies. That was like their favorite because it's sweet. But yeah, no one really cares for yams. Sweet potato casserole with the marshmallows on top and everything. I mean, if you want to make that cool, but you're not gonna eat it. I my my parents will. Okay, we'll see. And possibly our other guests. Honestly, I don't yeah, know what I'm like, making. Yeah, like but I, so Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays because there is so little pressure on the surround activities. It's basically like, we're going to show up and we're going to eat. And guess what? I do that every day, so I'm well-practiced. <laughs> See, and as a cook, <laughs> I think Thanksgiving is more pressure because of oh, all the cooking yeah. that you need to do and it's on yeah, time and da-da-da. So, but to me, that's a good and a fun part of it as opposed to... Are we cooking together? If you want to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've only got one stove and you have, like, multiple Will you stairs. come over here and... We'll Knock it out. All the casseroles. <laughs> Actually, for me, at cooking Thanksgiving, and I've done several, um, I do all the prep yeah. the day before. Like, everything's done the day well, yeah, before. Yeah, but, like, the cheesecake has to get made the day before because it's got to chill Yeah, for all the pies hours. are done. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's never that day of. Oh, anyway. are you a whipped cream or an ice cream with your pie or just straight up pie? No accoutrement. Um, all right. I am a whipped cream, Let's but I, I will do some ice cream if needed, yeah. but whipped cream. Okay, we'll have both. But I'm a real whipped cream girl. None of You're this cool that. whip stuff. We're going to got some cool whip. I'm <laughs> the get the real stuff and whip it up. Real whipped cream is all important. Right. Well, speaking of holidays, let's dive into our first topic. <clears throat> okay. Holiday sewing ideas, which are typically gift-giving thingies, like when you want to make a little something. And and honestly, do you not, like, at, right after Thanksgiving, I'm like, oh, crud, who do I need to make stuff for? Like, I do have that near <laughs> never. I one. don't, only like, because it's... typically most of that pressure comes before Thanksgiving because I am making things and have to have them wrapped and send back with my parents when they leave my house. So I get to get my panicky Christmas sewing done for my side of the family before Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I don't have to ship it. <laughs> But then, yeah, there's a little bit of like, oh, but like, it's it's more to me. Last year, oh my gosh, but, go ahead. But I, knowing that I have been married into my husband's family for, you know, coming on 20 years, like I've given the big handmade gifts to everyone. And so anything else handmade I give at this point is a bonus. Therefore, it doesn't have to be like a huge quilt. It'd be like, oh yeah, I think they would enjoy a table topper or a mug rug or, you know, it's, Stuff like that. Small. Yeah. So I don't, I haven't gone all in on like a big, huge, people are getting quilts. Multiple people are getting quilts from me in years. And it's really taken the pressure off. And maybe it's just because I don't go out and meet new people, <laughs> which is a good strategy for not having to make a lot of gifts. Just don't know a lot of people. <laughs> don't I have a lot of friends. Seriously. <laughs> and I, I know the people who, well... I can't say. Never mind. Some of the people who I'm making stuff for watch this show. <laughs> I know. But I I I will say that last year, the week before I'm looking at my husband, the week before Christmas, I was panic sewing to get you stuff done. Can't, you can't put that pressure on yourself, Lynn. Well, let's talk about how old I am and how that works. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I just, that's how I roll, unfortunately. I can't plan too far ahead because then it'll stress me out. And then when I get there, I'm like, oh, I got to get this done. I don't know. It feels smaller. The stress feels smaller than okay. if you plan it too far ahead. It feels like really big. Gotcha. Okay. So. When, ideas. When you are kind of in that grip of, I have to make some things mm -hmm. to give some people to show them that I care about them, but not enough that I want to think about giving them something for two months more. I just want to think about giving them something for three weeks. Right. What do you make? <laughs> I, I, I put down a list of go-tos. Okay. All right? What are your go-tos? Ornaments. Little folded fabric ornaments are super cute. They're stars. I thought I think they're called Scandinavian stars. You can find links on those. Yes. On we Facebook. will put a link to our favorite tutorial for that. Zipper bags. Zipper bags are just easy. Now, I will say a, a recommendation is um, Etsy is very good about this, but you can go buy a bundle of zippers. Like, I just need 20 zippers in all the colors. Right. And get a bundle, and then you have them there, and you're ready to go, and you can pick whatever fabric. And that's what I do. I yep. have a kind of drawer of zippers that I can go, okay, I need this for so-and-so, and I look through and find a zipper that'll work. Yep. Zipper bags. Okay, a friend of mine made this for me for a gift, and I've not made them for other people, but it was a lovely gift, and I really, when you first get it, you're like, oh, I don't know what I would do with this, but then I've used it every time I've traveled. Shoe bag. Shoe bag. I have made myself multiple ones. Oh, I yes. made golf shoe bag for my dad. Because yeah. the cleats and the mud and all that. And, and it was like two separate compartments. And then the one that she made for me was lined with like a flannel. So you would put your nice leather shoes in it. And it has this cute little uh, drawstring mm -hmm. tie at the top. And when I first got it, I was like, oh, thank you. Because I was grateful. But I was like, will I ever use this? In my head and... Oh, my gosh, I totally do, um, especially if you need to go to a wedding or an out-of-town thing. You want those nice shoes to kind of be protected and not get stuff on them. Uh, shoe bags, I think, are great. Um, okay, this is like a little bit bigger project, but a friend of mine also gave me this, and I use it all the time, 
and it would be super easy to make. So she took old TV trays. Like wood ones. Wood ones. Not the old chintzy metal kind no, that no, I grew no. up with. I had those too. <laughs> they, and they'd warp. Or oh, they'd, yeah. oh, yeah. And, and they, they had, had like the, the weird clamps. clamp, and then the plastic <laughs> on the clamp would break. And then oh, it yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, real dodgy. So the wood ones, so she got these wood ones and she painted them to match the fabric. But then she covered the wood with um, reflective material and then uh, cotton batting. Cotton batting. Cotton. Cotton. Not poly. Not 80 20. Cotton batting. Um, and then she put our favorite color of fabric or a fabric she thought we would like on top, and she stapled it, turned it under, and stapled it to the bottom. And it's an ironing. It's an ironing board kind of thing. But what's great is you can take it to, like, retreats and sew-alongs. And, and just set it up next to you. And it's, and it's a TV tray, so it's not heavy. And it's collapsible and easy to travel with, and I love it. So... If you have sewing friends, I think that's a kind of, and you could probably get inexpensive TV tray sets, you know, like at a Goodwill or some kind of secondhand type store. That would be easy. All right. What are some of yours? I have others, but what are yours? So we've talked before about uses for fabric postcards, and one of the things that I have found um, lovely and quick to do are panels that come out that are holiday themed. This one is Thanksgiving themed. Um, and it was featured on a video earlier about um, getting a straight cut on a panel because sometimes when panels are printed, you know, they're a little off grain. Do you want to hold some? Yes. Um, I want to look at it. But I took these. And so it's it's not a typical postcard size that you would mail. At least in the U.S., they kind of frown on square envelopes. You have to pay extra for that. But um, my vision, and you'll see these on the table at Thanksgiving, is there's going to be little, on the back, it's just a plain cardstock, and you can write the name like, oh, Lynn, welcome to our house. And then you get to take it home with you. Oh, I love that. I love these ideas. So I hope we don't have more than eight people, because that's the only number. <laughs> I think you I don't gave have to, I don't have to give one to myself, so. These are great. Yeah, so these are fun, like, little placards kind of thing. And so this is what a, nice a lovely, gift. A lovely I mean, giveaway for people yeah. that are coming to your house for a party. And the quilting on them is minimal. There's, like, a little around the outside. Yeah. Um, but when you're relying on kind of that printed piece, and you could do this with just a fun piece of holiday fabric that you are fussy cutting just to get a particular motif. Absolutely. Um, so this, to me, is a quick, oh, people are coming to a party. I'm not going to make everyone, like, a big honkin', like, party favor bag. But and just a nice little... Welcome. Welcome. Okay. And please leave by 9 p.m. <laughs> I'm not staying that long because oh, no, you, I said, figured that. you said we are eating <laughs> on the dot at 12.01. 12. Santa and Claus like, came through the Macy's parade and the turkey's ready. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're not staying till 9. You know, I didn't expect you to. Like, like you wow. gotta feed the dogs. We yeah. gotta feed dogs and stuff, yeah. So, and they're not invited, I'm sure, because they're table height and they stare at you. Well, like, more please. more because of cats than, right. than table height. <laughs> right. I don't know how they would. But you can take them home some turkey. Yeah. So, my next idea is um, something I've given you before, and I think that's a really clever idea, and I admit I completely stole it off of Pinterest, and I have no idea where the link is, but I'll look for one. But I made these little, again, zipper pouches, but I made it with a little red cross on it that it looks like a little medical kit. And then I put Band-Aids and Neosporin in it, and I gave it to all my sewing friends so that um, if they cut themselves, well, they could put it in their sewing kits and they would know where the Band-Aids were. You know, because we all, Nick... Cut, poke, stick. <laughs> you could also fit emergency chocolate in there. Oh, I didn't Now, do some chocolate. people need, like, a full-on pressure bandage and set to, like, <laughs> do their own this stitches. This was just so cute. <laughs> just maybe looking at production. <laughs> the, these, <laughs> Some compressed dressings. <laughs> these were just, you know, and I think I found cute Band-Aids with, like, sewing stuff on and them. Some steel-sewed work boots for when you drop the rotary cutter and it's still open. Yeah, Ooh. that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. 
<laughs> okay. So that was one of my. Yeah. So like, but a small one. But a small, yeah, just so that. And the fun thing about zipper bags, like they can look, you know, kind of austere and serious on the outside, but then you like put some real wacky fabric on the inside, like bam. Yeah. Like a fun like lining inside your coat. <laughs> with otters or owls or something fun. Yeah. Anyway. All right. What's another one? So I have bemoaned the collection of gold buttons that I have. And by the time this episode drops, there will be a tutorial on what I have done with this collection of gold buttons. And these are like random coat buttons. Oh, wow. Like the extras from various clothing items. Some of these look military. Yes. They have shields on them and stuff. Yes. I think they're faux military. The real military doesn't This um, looks do like that. kingly. Yes. So I, <laughs> I have inherited button boxes from my grandmother and my aunt in addition to just what I have naturally collected in the course of buying clothes and the extra buttons. And so... Um, what I'm planning on making is kind of a small hanging piece, probably about 12 by 12. We'll know the final size when the tutorial drops, so we'll <laughs> link to that. But using uh, leftover strings and scraps of green fabric to piece together kind of an improv tree. Oh, that'll be fun. And then the buttons get be stitched your on as ornaments or like as a line of garland. Uh, so you will see that finished somewhere else not on this show because of the nature of filming the show but i do like this so i don't think i'd give mine away though no well no they're not getting this yeah right so uh what this container is there is this gelato line called talenti which they sell here in the u.s in our area and i'm sure other parts of the united states i'm not sure about internationally but the container is lovely because it's a screw-on lid and it's a nice wide mouth and so it's helpful for holding stuff like this. This size also works. You could like fit the binding for a whole quilt in here along with the needle and thread and scissors as like a little binding kit. Um, but it's uh, Talenti. <laughs> <laughs> and I was partial to the chocolate peanut butter cup flavor. <laughs> I like the salted caramel and the Mediterranean mint are very tasty as well. I think I have a double chocolate one too. Um, all right, so my next one is that I made for someone is, a, or a group last year, was like those small kind of quick purses that are just kind of a, you know. Like a crossbody bag. Yeah, but that are just like this big. Mm -hmm. And the only reason is because sometimes when we all go out to concerts, holiday events, shopping, kind of, you only want your phone, credit card, and... ID. Keys, ID, that's it. So you don't want to bring the big heavy purse or whatever. So the crossbody bags were really cute. I made those. Yeah. Of course, I make postcards. And that's a class that you can link to. I make those all the time. And you can frame those or like what you're doing with the, the holiday things. That's cute little thing. Yeah. Now, we've talked on a previous show about orphan blocks. And... One of the things you can do with those, you know, we talked about making them like just little tiny, you know, like we've got on our table here. Yeah, 12 by 12. A little 12 by 12. But if you put the reflective batting in there, they suddenly become a hot pad. Or right. you could use a double layer of cotton batting as well. And that takes the place of a trivet or, right. you know, I have, I have wood, I have cork, I have a couple of those. Or so the, hand, you know, the the slots mitt. on the other side of it. And then it becomes a mint oh, yeah. as well as a hot bat. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have orphan blocks, that's a nice functional gift. It's not just like, here's a thing to sit. It's a, oh, here is a hot pad that you can use regularly. Well, and if you have orphan blocks too, there's nothing to say. You can't take the chalkboard fabric and cut a section of that, stitch it on the orphan block, put a saying on it. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Here's a sentiment for... Yeah. And if you don't have chalkboard fabric, look for a black vinyl tablecloth right. that you can cut up. Absolutely. Those work. That is legit. Don't make it too glossy, though. It's a little... Yeah. Well, and they have some of those that you can get, like, at the big box stores where you can buy an eighth of a yard or a, a quarter, not a quarter yard, but, yeah, a quarter of a yard of it. You get 60 inches, Ooh. nine inches. That's a lot. You will use that, and it'll be a lot less expensive. Um Tote bag, like you can make those really quick tote bags for people to take to grocery stores or those kind of things. And those don't have to be lined. They don't have to no. be have a lot of heavy. 
it is better to make some of those maybe out of canvas or uh, duck cloth. Yes. Um, it gives them a little bit more strength. And try to use the webbed um, handles. Handles will give you more strength than just like a regular handle that you would make. Now, I have also, because I didn't have access to the webbed handles, have used uh, remnants of denim. That's a good and idea. And folded those uh, as you would bias tape, where right. you have your width, you fold it in both sides into the center, and then you fold it again, and you stitch down the long way. Right. And that's a really sturdy handle as well. Yeah. So anything that you're going to use for, like, heavier items, you want a heavier. Like, it would not do well for just a cotton. No. And you would, <laughs> as you attach the handles to the bag, you want to sew, stitch a box. And then even X and the then box. X, yes. Yeah. And that helps distribute some of that tension across the fiber so you and don't get rips. She will know this to be true. <laughs> as, as a champion of bringing all grocery items in in a single trip, yes. <laughs> that. Do you yeah. really try to do the whole? Yes. Family of four. I go to the grocery store probably twice a week, and I'm doing, you know, stocking up on basics and then, you know, specific meal planning. Yeah. I mean, we're Bring talking like in. 12 bags, like, and a gallon of milk. <laughs> okay. Like, I put an Instagram post up with, like, here's all the groceries I brought up on one trip. Like, look at my proud achievement. I like, Basically, that. like, I would like my tombstone to say she died doing what she loved, <laughs> bringing all the groceries in on one trip. <laughs> because I have to go up a flight of stairs. You do. Now, when I go to the warehouse... No matter which way you go into your house, you have I know. to go oh, yeah. five of stairs. Now, if I do the warehouse, then usually I'm, like, bringing in recruits to carry all that stuff up because it's, like, 40 pounds of cat litter. And <laughs> yeah, that's different. <laughs> that's the, that's why you have kids. I, my, I think my parents had kids, so we would get out and close the garage door for them because we didn't have automatic garage door openers. Like, my... <laughs> like, the thing that kids bring to my life, you know, joy, companionship, love. Um, also, they carry the heavy stuff. There you go. Ooh, now they can reach the tall stuff on the shelves, too. Like, that worked out great. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, my last tip is okay. hot pads, table runners. Yeah, table runners. And now that we're making it trendy. Bed scarves. Bed scarves. See, also last episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So those are my go-to quick, easy. So when you say quick, how much time commitment are you talking for a single one of these items? Well, like, I think you can knock out. Now, I usually, and I have two of my friends who I give gifts to, I usually will plan out six zipper bags at the same yeah. time. And so it may take me four hours to do six of those, but when I'm done... I do all Six the of, same steps. Yeah, you just you're doing I cut them all out. Line. I cut them once they're all cut out. Then I add the zipper and I add the zipper on all of them. Then they do that. So I will do, you know, and I'll think before I start. I will think about the whole. I want, um, the, you know, who all could get this. Oh yeah. That's, and so you're and you make a list. Okay, this get my sister could get one. You know, Pam could get one. <laughs> well, and the fun thing too, yeah. like a zip a zipper pouch is easy enough to do, and you can tuck other things inside of it. Like, right. oh, I got your favorite pen. Oh, you know, I right. luggage tags are a nice one, but you have to get into vinyl a little bit. So, or the clear. Yes, that is the vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I gotta make. I gotta make me. Well, some I was those. thinking. Uh, you know, there's some faux vinyl, too, that I've made some of those cross bags from yeah. that look like leather but aren't leather. And they're really—and then I've embroidered stuff on them. Yeah. It depends on how much time you have yeah, in your— runway. How much you can personalize. Yeah. Like, if you can personalize some of the stuff by just, you know, monogramming a—you know me, good monogram. She loves a good monogram. I do love a good monogram. Or a saying or a cute thing or... All right. Well, we are going to have links to ideas and, you know, construction tips for some of these. They're not all our tutorials. In fact, no. I don't think any of these are our tutorials except None. for the postcard one. Um, but we'll have links to that in the show notes on the blog. I will see if I can fit them on the YouTube show notes. A lot of just Pinterest. Go to Pinterest and look up ideas, and there's tons. Yeah, and if you find something good, you should definitely leave in the comments because we want to see it too. Absolutely. 
Now we're going to take a closer look at the Scraptacular sta Sawtooth Star. For some reason, I can't say it. Quilt, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> we had to give a little physical prompt. <laughs> Frozen smiles for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it says, never mind. Um, I don't know where I was in my brain, but I wasn't. I wasn't apparently with the teleprompter. Um, so our next topic is going to be making quilts from a whole line of fabric, and we've both done this. Yes, and, and this comes about from like you buy a fat quarter bundle or jelly roll. Yeah, and or, and and I think a lot of that, the desire to make a thing from the whole line of fabric is I don't want I just spent eleven trillion dollars on a fat quarter bundle, and why do I need to buy more fabric to make a quilt? Right, <laughs> that's yeah. that's part of what fuels me with it a good bit. So. The quote behind us is from a whole line of fabric, and. To me, the go-to for me when I'm using this is a two-fabric block, maybe a three-fabric block. Oh, because you don't have any other fabrics. No other fabrics. It's just straight this the, line. No, the binding is the exception. Like it's yeah, but I didn't. You know. can't tell. Yeah. And so there's a lot of. I mean, it depends on the line, though, because this line does not have any what I would call blender-type fabrics in it. It doesn't have the cream background like fabric. The, one, the white one <laughs> with the gray squares. They just, the camera's probably not picking it up, but there were only a few that were considered traditionally light right. and a few that are traditionally dark. There's some dark grays and some blacks, but the rest are a lot of medium prints and we've talked about this before right exactly um, and so when I'm trying to make this kind of project I'm looking for like I can get contrast between two pieces of fabric it's either Absolute. a contrast I think pattern, that's a good tip a contrast in value and so right. you could do a medium and a dark or you could do two mediums but one medium is a little lighter and one's a little darker and it's because they're next to each other you see the difference right I think that's good and so you can pick a block and make a whole quilt top out of it and, you know, churn dash, sawtooth star, any of the star blocks typically are just a two fabric block and you don't put sashing in it and you just butt them up next to each other. Done. Done. And there's a tutorial video we did for this one about how do you nest the seams? Um, how do you press seams for a sawtooth star block to get them to nest because you're rotating like every other block. So it's, it's a real neat trick. It just takes a little bit of planning. And I don't think I ever approach a whole line without knowing I'm not going to add something to it. Yeah, see? I think this is, because I, I was, even when I was prepping the notes for this, I was like, well, this is quick and easy. You take the whole line, you find a solid that's even need that. <laughs> going to go with the yeah. whole line, and then you're going to add, and I think our last show kind of did that well. It was a whole line of fabric, and we took two solids that went with it, three actually, that went with it, and then that worked. And you weren't, the solids weren't competing with the line because you want to show off this line of fabric, but at the same time, um, it was giving you a rest of what that line was in, in the solids. It gave your eye a rest, not just you sleeping in the middle of the quilt. Just saying. <laughs> but you're right. You have to do a light dark, divided it up into light dark, or divide it up into this color to, you know, what am I, what's going to contrast against these two colors? Yeah. Are they going to be seen? And then a two color block and you're done. Yep. Well, it's quick and easy. It is. There you go. How fast did you do this? This one went pretty quick because I I was able to stack all the fat quarters. I would do six at a time. And oh, yeah. And know, like, here's all my lights, here's all my darks. Or I knew that there, 
for every block, there's an inverse block. So red center, yellow outside, there's another one with the yellow center and a red outside. So I was cutting parts at, for a background as well as uh, the star itself as right. I had them stacked. And then it was just a matter of kind of matching them up. Like, oh, I know there's contrast between these two. So because I was doing uh, cutting six fat quarters at a time and there are 30 different blocks, I mean, I only had to cut five different times. Right. And all the pieces were cut. And because there's no sashing, like, boop. Done. Done. How big is this? However big it is. <laughs> it looks like about 40 by... It is. There are... Almost 60, I don't maybe. know, nine-inch blocks. Yeah. Nine, so, yeah. 45 by 60-ish. 60-ish? No, 54. 50. Math. It's not as tall as me. It's no, almost... It's, it's like here instead of here. Yes. Okay. Um, do you find this... I mean, I think it looks great. It looks good. And I think there's a lot going on in it. If you don't have a solid, there's always going to be a lot going on in it. Yes. Now, I know these are really bright colors. Not all lines are really bright colors. Yeah, but, but I think even when you look at mimicking this with a classic line of maybe Civil War prints, there's always going to be lights and darks when you yes, put them next to each I other. Agree. And that's where that magic comes in, of the contrast right. of the two. And there's a ton of simple block patterns out there, like Friendship Stars and... Ohio Stars. Even Rail Fence with a little bit of planning. If you just do, like, two by two. Log Cabin. Yep. You could do a Log Cabin. Yeah. So go back to those basic blocks that use, like, two distinct values in there. And honestly, you could put three fabrics in each block and make the center a different one. Oh, right. You could do Novelty... In the well, center. That's not from a whole line of fabric, though. Oh, sorry. So just reel it in, girl. I know. It's, <laughs> no, this is a harder topic She's than I realized. She's out. <laughs> I've, like, if you say you can only use this, it bothers me. I need that one extra, I think. I don't know that I would do this well. That's why I did this one. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> As soon as someone as soon as someone approaches us and says you have to use our line of fabric, I'm like, well, what else can I use? Nothing. Nothing. But then I have to be really attracted to that line of fabric and see where I can. Would you take that on as a challenge? Though? I did. I, we have a pattern coming out next year that is this. It has no other. Well, there you go. Yeah, I did. So. I designed the majority of it. I mean, you definitely. I weighed in. <laughs> I gave it a cute name. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really sad because I thought I had came up with the name like, no, and she didn't. It's been in the spreadsheet for you, like a year. <laughs> I just came up with the perfect quilt to go in it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's the marriage. <laughs> the perfect quilt with the perfect name kind of thing. I, I mean, I don't know. I think it looks good. I think it's easy to do. It seems very quick. It is. But I think... It's the batch cutting. And so a couple tips when you're trying to cut multiple layers of fabric. When I am pressing my fat quarters or fat eights uh, to prep them, I will put, knowing that I'm cutting in like groups of six, I will do a little bit of planning. And so I will... Right. Uh, do a little bit of, you know, spray starch and press the first one. And then I layer the second one on top of that. And I will press, like, all six stacked on top of each other. And then I pick that up and I carry that to the cutting table. Boop. And I square it up. I just kind of line it up to the lines. Usually the selvage edge. Then I'm trimming off the selvage edge. Now, I'm left-handed, so I'm trimming off the selvage edge on the right side. Right-handed people will probably do it different. <laughs> No, I trim on the right side. You trim, so you've got it oriented so the selvage is on the right side and you're trimming that. Yeah. Now, do you turn it around? Yeah. To, see, I don't have to turn it around. Boop! <laughs> I just keep on a cut. Yeah, I turn it around. No, I don't have to do that. Because... Because you're coming at it from this side right. and I'm coming at it from this side. Because my well, cutting's we'll, on this side. I wouldn't... Even for you, I would tell you to turn around and trim it up from this side so that you get the line on the ruler the right way. You're not my mom. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have to trim one side I could do, and, and a bottom edge. 
I could do what you're doing, but I don't agree. No, I would do it on this side, but I don't agree that I'm, I don't agree that that's the best way you should trim fabric. Okay. So, <laughs> but I see what you're doing. I would turn it, if I wanted to do that, I would line up the selvage edge on the left side and trim it, but then I would just hope that it's your hope and stitch method. I would hope that everything lined up right and that I got the straight cut that I wanted. Yeah. I usually trim from this side, turn it around, and if I were teaching left-handed, I would have you trim from this side and turn it around. Go ahead. She's cute. I know. <laughs> So I know what you're doing now. Yeah. You yeah. Do. So you need to trim one, you need to basically trim two adjacent corners in whatever method you are doing. Yes. So you've got a square to start with. And then that's important. Yes. And then I'm basically kind of trimming like a strip and then I'm sub cutting that. So I'm not trying to come in and like cut a three and a half inch square and then another three and a half inch square. I'm cutting oh, gosh, like no. a three and a half inch strip and then I'm sub cutting that into the triangle pieces, the squares, yes. like all of that. Um, and I, I don't go more than six deep only because I found when I try to eke it up into eight, there's a lot of shifting. It's just, it I think six me. a little dodgy. I don't go more than four. Yeah. Well, I was in a hurry. <laughs> so I went six. And I also knew that 30 wasn't divisible by four. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even worry about that. <laughs> I don't worry about divisibility. I usually do four's my max if I'm cutting like that. Um, six is a little, a bridge too far, except for when, like, I was in a hurry and I just, or I, just, I know I'm going to be trimming it up later. Yeah, I don't do that. I, I got time for that. Don't. I was in a hurry. I trim up stuff and then trim up stuff later sometimes. Okay. So it is feasible to get this kind of assembly lined done. Yes. Now yes. the... The kind of aggravating part that was slower to me was, okay, now I've got a stack of six of all these different things. I have to, like, pick up in group of, like, all the fabric pieces for the one, like, the top layer, kind of stack those up, and then take the second layer and stack those up. So that took longer to me than the cutting and the prepping for everything. I'm like, oh, I'm disordered. Because you have to make sure that you're getting the right stuff. So right. right. You don't need to be stitching along thinking you've got eight yellow points, and all of a sudden you only have seven yellow points and a green one. Like, ooh. Right. That would be right. not good. Yeah. Did you use the entire fat quarter, or do you have stuff left over? Because I, I know that's really important to you. When she gets a pattern that says, this is fat quarter right. friendly. You better use most of this stuff. You better use most as a fat quarter, or she feels like it's not. I So I think this ended up, it was like a fat eighth equivalent, and you got some of the leftovers. Yeah, I did. They were distributed. It, I so, I still remember. But it was a healthy enough chunk stash. left that I was like, eh, I'd still fold this up and stick it I in my stash. I have a lot of this right there. Yeah. Because I think it was the back, and I quilted it on something. And I, yeah, it was the backing for a dapper that we just showed last yeah, episode. Yeah, I have some of that from trimming. Yeah. So, I don't think I do. Th I mean, you I've don't. done. She don't do it. I don't do this don't. very often. I did with this last one that we've got coming out next year. Because um, I was really attracted to the fabric and I felt like it could happen. But, yeah, normally that, I don't do that. I you have just to like add a little more stuff. control. I do. Whereas I'm like, I'm going to get some stuff done. <laughs> I can't. I don't, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So are you a scraptacular or a singular sensation when it comes to picking fabric? We know her answer. You could, But you can leave a comment on our blog or YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by Inmart and QT Fabrics. You can find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce this stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube. Our next virtual stitch-in is Friday, December 13th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, and that's broadcast live on our YouTube channel. We're changing up our book club format, so stay tuned for some special broadcasts on that fourth Friday slot. All these details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan gear, quilt patterns, and video classes. 
Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.